Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is January the 23rd, 2021. Let's talk NFL playoffs, conference finals. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've already talked about how I like futures in both games, right? Simply because the leverage being offered is outrageous, right? I can't believe that I'm getting a plus 400 on Tampa Bay, a team that already beat Green Bay on October the 18th, 2020, this season, right? In a game where they scored the last 38 points of the game. Um, whoever I think is going to win or cover, I want a taste of the plus 400, right? Let me go one step further, too. Uh, Green Bay, believe it or not, you're getting greater than a plus 200 on the futures. The minute you're above a plus 210, I think you need to have Green Bay in your futures. In other words, in the NFC, I just want to stay alive and enter the finals with leverage, right? That's all I want to do. In the uh, AFC, you know, I'm tempted by Buffalo. I'm tempted by Buffalo, but I haven't made a final decision there yet. But understand, you're getting a plus 300 on the Buffalo Bills, right? A plus 300. Um, the elephant in the room, of course, is the 245 yards that Kansas City rushed for when the two teams played each other on Monday Night Football earlier this year, uh, October the 19th, 2020, a game you need to investigate, right? It's possible that KC, as high-flying as their passing game is, is going to try to run the football down Buffalo's throat. I will say this. Buffalo did extremely well defensively against the Baltimore Ravens, right? That defense may have solved that problem. Also, Pat Mahomes, whether or not he had a concussion, you know he has a bad toe that's going to completely change his game. But let's just talk about some background thoughts that I want people to consider. Three of the quarterbacks playing this weekend, three of them, have not only won at least one Super Bowl, they've been Super Bowl MVP. Right? Think about that. Three of the four. The fourth is the one without a rushing game. Right? That's Josh Allen. The fourth is the one who had accuracy problems coming out of college early in his career. The fourth is the one who never played in a conference championship game before. Huge experience deficit here, right? You're in the pond, the part of the pond that has Super Bowl MVPs in it, right? Think about that. And of course, he's coming off of a mediocre performance in his prior game against the Ravens. And, of course, there's that team problem. The fact that Kansas City rushed for 245 yards in a Monday night game when Buffalo's run defense did not show up. But let's be clear here, and it's a dynamic that might play itself out. I think it's worth a lot. With Pat Mahomes' toe injury, Josh Allen is likely to be the best athlete at the position this weekend. Understand, Josh Allen is a great athlete, right? We think about Lamar Jackson as being a great running quarterback and stuff like that. Understand, when things break down, Josh Allen can run with the best of them, right? He's a guy who likes to throw. He doesn't run as often as some of the other quarterbacks in the league. But understand, this is a guy who has that physical capability. Let me say this, too. The Bill defense, the same defense that got beaten by KC earlier in this year, right? that got run over, quite frankly, by KC earlier in this year, is going to be the best defense on the field. 
right? KC's defense is simply not the strong part of their game. And while it's true that the Bills really have no rushing attack, certainly nothing on par with the other teams, understand that KC has a bad run defense. Right? Bad run defense. Also, Buffalo is much better on special teams. If the game is close, that matters. So on paper, because of the rushing disparity, the fact that Kansas City has multiple running backs, right? The fact that KC is at home and Josh Allen is coming off really a lackluster game where their rushing attack was non-existent, right? Bill's defense is playing well. Bill's rushing offense is not. Right? I would say, just from the cheap seats here, in this virtual sports book, I would say that the math favors Kansas City to win the game. Right? But, there's a lot going on here. My read is that Josh Allen is an excellent leader. My read is that the Buffalo defense is trending positive above and beyond their stats, right? I am expecting Buffalo to live and die on Josh Allen passing the football. I'll agree with that. But let's just say Josh Allen this year, for most of the year, has been extremely accurate. It's possible that he's undervalued, right? Just food for thought. Um, the plus 300 seems a bit rich to me on Buffalo to win it all. Let's talk about the NFC. Now understand if Tampa wins, they're going to be the first team to host the Super Bowl in their home stadium. Think about that. Now we know they're not the first team to have their region host the championship game because we know the San Francisco 49ers and Dan Marino's only Super Bowl beat the Dolphins in Northern California at Stanford Stadium, right? We know that, but understand, my goodness, Bruce Arians and company must be thinking, hey, we get by this game, we'll take our chances against KC or Buffalo at home in Tampa. Right, Tampa will have a decided advantage in terms of familiarity. Even though the stadium won't be filled, understand, in the pregame, Tampa players will be able to sleep in their own bed, will be able to be with their own families. It won't be a road trip for them. The media circus will be visiting their town. They won't be going to the media circus. Let me also say, too, that Tampa's offense, and understand, this is the team going off at a plus 400, Right? My advice to gamblers is you have to find a way to get that plus 400 on Tampa to win it all in your betting portfolio. I'm not saying that they do. What I am saying, though, is an 11-win team, regular season, 11 wins, a team that already beat Green Bay, sacked Aaron Rodgers five times with Tom Brady, experienced quarterback, cold weather quarterback, Right? A plus 400 are odds that are a gift from the casino. Well, let me just say, Tampa's offense is statistically better, in my opinion, than Green Bay's defense. Right? Here's a math edge to Tampa's offense, especially the rushing offense against Green Bay's rushing defense. Right? Let's remember when the two teams played and Tampa won that game 38-10. That was October the 18th. 2020, Tampa had 158 rushing yards. 158. Let's also say that Tampa has Fournette and Jones. Fournette has looked absolutely inspired this postseason. Right? Understand, Tampa, if it chooses, can run the ball repeatedly because they have more than one 
lead running back. Right now, that's essential because we're hearing about the wind chill in Green Bay. Cold weather might impact the passing game. I'm not sure if it would impact the rushing attack. So here you have a team going off at plus 400 to win it all in the conference finals level. In other words, you win this game with Tampa, and it doesn't matter who Tampa plays in the finals because you would already have such odds that you'd be able to hedge the play. You know that, right? You'd be able to make a profit. So with a plus 400, you win this game, you're in the profit zone already. Right now, Tampa, the offense, has an advantage over Green Bay's defense. But you need to understand that Tom Brady's top target the last month of the regular season, Antonio Brown, is out. He's not playing. Now, you still have some very good wide receivers. Mike Evans comes to mind on Tampa, right? Chris Godwin. And, of course, you have Gronkowski, right? A favorite of Tom Brady's at this time of year. But just realize that, again, Antonio Brown, and let's be real on Antonio Brown, for all of his problems, statistically, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Just understand, he was with Tom for five minutes in New England, right? When he joins Tom mid-season, in Tampa, somehow it works out where he's Tom's top target in December. Very important part of this offense. He's out. You need to consider that. Now, speaking of offense, Green Bay's offense is the best in the game. Let me repeat that. Green Bay's offense is the best in the game. And they're playing at home. But, and it's a big but, Tampa Bay has a great run defense. Great. This could slow down Green Bay dramatically. If Tampa is able to shut down Green Bay's rushing attack, and find a way to slow down Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers' favorite receiver. And this game could be very competitive, more competitive than a plus 400 on NFL futures for Tampa suggests. Right, so by play here, I'm just looking for situations. The game, let's say it's going to be a competitive close game. In my eyes. Right? It's going to be a competitive close game. I believe the way to play this, because you're getting a plus 400 on Tampa, and because you're getting greater than a plus 210 on Green Bay, is to punt here. I believe you want action on both sides of the play. Understand, when you do that, you're going to lose part of your bet. Somebody has to win this game. If Green Bay wins this game, then I lose the money that I put on the plus 400 for Tampa. Right? But to me, the risk is worth it. Because if this game is a 50-50 game or close to it, as I see the game, if the game's a jump ball, well, understand, by having money on Tampa plus 400, that means that I have... a 50% chance, if you view this game like I do, it's 50-50, then I have a 50% chance of getting a profit on the whole thing. Because if Tampa wins this game, and I'm looking at 4-1 to one leverage for the Super Bowl, you got to be kidding. I can then hedge the play, walk home with a profit. The whole exercise has been a moneymaker for me. Right? Likewise, if I get leverage on Green Bay at better than a plus 210 
and then I'm in the finals against Buffalo, let's say, right? Let's say Buffalo pulls the upset. Let's say Pat Mahomes is hobbled by that foot, isn't able to run around and hit wide receivers like he'd like. And let's say Buffalo's defense stops the run, focuses on the run, is not going to allow 245 yards this time. And Pat Mahomes makes a couple of errant throws because KC hasn't been blowing out teams. Then understand, Green Bay would be the favorite against Buffalo because, again, Aaron Rodgers, who's favored to win the MVP again this year, Right, would be viewed as the quarterback who's been there, done that, against a young upstart in Josh Allen, who is playing in the AFC Championship game for the first time this year. Right, Green Bay, if it gets to the Super Bowl against Buffalo, would be favored. So there you'd be able to easily hedge the play. Right, because rather than have a minus one tan giving away three points or whatever, you would have it so you're set to collect a plus 220 or higher on Green Bay, the current futures price, right, if Green Bay simply wins the game. So you could give away some of the expected earnings at that point. So that's how I see it. If you take one thing away from this video, just understand, Buffalo... Weak rushing game in the AFC, right? Inexperienced quarterback. And in the NFC, it's that statistically, Tampa's offense is better than Green Bay's defense. And while Green Bay's defense, excuse me, while Green Bay's offense is the best in the league, Tampa has one of the best defenses in the league. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. If I had one bet to make for this entire weekend, it would be Tampa Bay plus 400 on NFL Futures. If you're going to swing, swing for the fences. That's how I see it. Thanks for stopping by.